Now we have Sylvia Green, um, Director of Research at Cambridge Assessment, to introduce the study and her team. Sylvia. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming, battling through the traffic and the tubes. Thank you to the people in the room, and thank you to everyone who's listening um, on the, from the external audience. Now, it doesn't seem as if it could possibly be 10 years since um, I stood somewhere like this and talked about this study the last time. As we present these findings today, it is very exciting, as Professor Myhill has said. The idea for this research all that time ago came from um, a guy called Alf Massey. He was head of a department in the research division at the University of Cambridge Local Examination Syndicate, UCLS, now Cambridge Assessment. In the early 1990s, he had the foresight to recognise a very valuable research opportunity because a set of systematic script samples had been saved, a corpus based on the fourth sentence of the answer to a composition question, stratified by grade and by gender, in 1980. Now, given the nature of this sample, clearly the analysis was limited. Um, we couldn't include whole text features. But it was possible to look at simple counts of punctuation, to look at vocabulary, including spelling. Over time, since that initial research, the methodology has been extended to include far more aspects of writing, including whole text features, which we will look at later in the presentation. The research reported in this series focuses on 16-year-olds, as we've said, on individual features of writing, and that is an important point. It is important to note the whole qualification is about a great deal more than these features that we've selected. And while there are limitations to this approach, reasonable comparisons can and have been made. We gave a great deal of thought to the issue of grade inflation because we use grades in the presentation of our findings. But as I mentioned earlier, the aspects of writing reported here represent part of the overall attainment of the students in this sample. And the grades are used simply as a technique, a technique for indicating the spread of attainment across the particular cohort. Consequently, they're not indicators of grading standards, and we are not comparing grading standards over time. Rather, we investigate how attainment in selected areas of writing have changed over time. Now, several publications deal, detail the entire history of this research series, and they can be found on the Cambridge Assessment website. The current research is reported in a special issue of Cambridge Assessment Publication Research Matters, which you'll find in your pack. In the past, a range of features have, been, um, have brought a great deal of attention from the media, from the public, from stakeholders, including changes in spelling attainment, the use of non-standard English, and the accuracy, or not, in the use of punctuation. We need also to think about a number of educational changes that have taken place since 16-year-olds wrote those narrative scripts in 1980. Several initiatives have introduced, been introduced in relation to content, in relation to pedagogy, and also to assessment. In 1998, the National Literacy Strategy and the National Literacy Framework were introduced for five to 11-year-olds. And this 2014 cohort, the focus of this study we report today, would have been influenced by those strategies for the whole of their primary education. And this is the first cohort to have had that experience. The secondary framework was introduced in Key Stage 3, in 2001, 
and revised for Key Stage 3 and 4 in 2008. Also in 2008, Key Stage 3 national tests were removed. So much has happened in that time. But in this research, we report the findings with little theorising and little evaluation of the educational context or the reasons for change. We're presenting the data, which we hope will provide a stimulus for discussion and a springboard, as Professor Myhill said, for more detailed and extended research. Members of the research team from the research division at Cambridge Assessment are here today to present some of the findings. However, time permits us to select only some of the outcomes and details of the rest are in the special issue. However, that's not the whole story, because since that publication was completed, two further studies have taken place since the, the main report, and both of these are in preparation for journal publication. You're going to get early sight of those, because today, research officer Filiu Constantinou from the research division will present findings on her study, social media communication and students writing. The second additional study will be reported by Nikki Rushton, also a research officer at Cambridge Assessment, and she'll present findings from more detailed analyses of the nature of the 2014 spelling errors. But first, Jill Elliott, Principal Research Officer at Cambridge Assessment and leader of our comparability team, will outline the method and key findings from the main report. Jill's been involved in every phase of the aspects of writing study since it began 20 years ago. She has a degree in psychology from the University of York and a master's in, ed in education. She's become very used to wrestling with the imponderable questions that arise from this field of research. 